The backlash continues this afternoon against President Obama's decision to abstain from a vote on settlements last week at the United Nations. Just moments ago, the State Department fending off criticism that the vote was orchestrated by the United States to negatively impact Israel. You know, this was a resolution that we could not, in good conscience, uh, veto uh, because it condemns violence, it condemned incitement, it reiterates uh, what has long been the overwhelming consensus, uh, international view on settlements, and it calls for the parties to take constructive steps to advance a two-state solution on the ground. There was nothing in there uh, that would prompt us to veto that type of resolution. Again, that happened just moments ago down at the State Department. This is Israel continues to blame the Obama administration for crafting last week's vote at the U.N. Now, I want to bring in my colleagues Cal Perry and Eamon Mohadeen, both of them over at the big board. Let's, let's talk about what these settlements actually are and why this is such a big deal, if we can, guys. Yeah, such a contentious issue, often confusing, very complicated, so we wanted to walk folks through it. So this is the West Bank here and the Gaza Strip here. This would be the beginnings of a two-state solution if you were to have Palestinian territory here and the Gaza Strip. This is occupied Palestinian land here. This is based on the 1967 borders. As we go closer in, though, these are the settlements. There are, according to Beth Selim, which is an Israeli human rights organization, at least 125, each one of these blue dots, is an Israeli settlement. Those are the ones that are authorized. You have, in addition to that, 100 illegal outposts in here. All of this that you see in yellow is pretty much areas that are restricted to Palestinians. What does that mean? Well, th this is what makes this such a sensitive issue. Israelis believe and argue that these are Jewish communities, Jewish neighborhoods, that they have a right to build there. But as you see and you pointed out on the map, the expansion and building of Jewish settlements in the occupied Palestinian territories essentially comes down to Palestinian disposition. They believe that every time you're building a settlement, you're taking away from a future Palestinian state. And as a result of that, it is... Uh, making the possibility of peace less and less likely. You're confiscating Palestinian lands. You're taking resources away from the areas that Palestinians want for their statehood, the security, and, and some of the other points that I'm sure you're going to point out right now. So it's a philosophical battle. I mean, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about 547,000 settlers between the occupied West Bank and East Jerusalem. When we say East Jerusalem, here's what we're talking about. Looks like a mess because it is a mess. If you were sitting down right now to try to make peace between the Palestinians and the Israelis, this is your starting map on Jerusalem. Yeah, and then you see why it's so hard, because you have to kind of walk your way around every single one of these neighborhoods. This red line that Cal's drawing right there, Cal, that is essentially the separation barrier that Israel has built around East Jerusalem. Now, Israelis say they're building this uh, separation barrier or security wall to protect them from incoming uh, suicide bombers or terrorist attacks into Israel proper. The Palestinians say this amounts to nothing but a land, land grab for them, uh, to, you know, for the state of Israel taking it away from Palestinian land. This is just East Jerusalem. Everything in dark red are settlements. Take Bethlehem, for example. Here's Bethlehem just to the south of Jerusalem. You have the settlement of Har Homa, you have the settlement of Gilo, and you have the crossing here into Jerusalem. But again, like Eamon was sort of pointing out, it shows you the difficulty of movement. What these settlements have roads, right, water, all of these things are involved. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what makes it difficult for Palestinians to move from one checkpoint to the other. And this is a map of Bethlehem, I believe. There's a yep. picture there of uh, a Palestinian dressed as a uh, Santa Claus, Israeli soldiers there. And it highlights, really, the restriction on movements for Palestinians to move from one area to the other because these settlements have a lot of security, have Jewish-only roads, and have all kinds of restrictions around them. So it kind of dices up the Palestinian territory. This is a settlement currently under construction in East Jerusalem. This is a better example. So this is an Israeli settlement here, Craig, and you can see it's got its own barrier and its own road. And this is a lot of times what you hear when Palestinians talk about access. And you heard Eamon talking about it just now. Access, roads and water. This settlement has its own water supply. It's got its own roads. It has its own schools. It has its own access point. And it's deep inside the West Bank. Just lastly, I, I wanted to kind of point out, just so folks know, we're talking about here an area the size of Delaware. The thinnest point here in Israel between the West Bank and the water here is 10 miles. Right? So we're not talking about a very big geographical area, and that's key to this whole thing, Craig. I, I learned more in the last five minutes uh, on, on cable news than I have perhaps in the last year. So thank you both for uh, an educational presentation there. Really quickly, uh, Hugh Hewitt just mentioned the idea, and Donald Trump, of course, has mentioned this as well, the idea of, of moving the embassy um, there. How significant of, of a deal would that be, and, and why so? 
Uh, well, this is a very significant development. Uh, interestingly enough, Craig, the issue of Jerusalem is perhaps one of the issues that Palestinians don't have a monopoly on negotiating about. Some of these other issues, maybe water, roads, refugees, those are Palestinian issues. But the issue of Jerusalem is seen by the broader Muslim world as something that matters to all of them. And so moving the embassy to Jerusalem, which obviously is considered uh, united by uh, Israel, but illegal under international law, the annexation of East Jerusalem, that is going to be a very sensitive issue. Now, some are saying, well, it depends on how the Trump administration finesses it. Perhaps they move the embassy somewhere in West Jerusalem, which would be considered anyway as part of a future Israeli state. So there is some way to finesse the movement of the embassy without necessarily sparking okay. the kind of concerns that a lot of people have uh, if, in fact, East Jerusalem is somehow put into that uh, mix. Eamon, Cal, a big thanks to both of you this afternoon. Do appreciate that. Yep. Kids in need of desks. Is